What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Fernando here aka jnandis87. In today's video I'm going to answer one of the most if not the most often asked question that I get all the time which is how much money can you make playing poker professionally as a side job and also how long does it take you to get there. Now first of all I don't know how long it's going to take you specifically to get there because that depends on you and guess what I don't know you so there are a lot of factors that play into this of course your experience your talent but also and mostly the effort that you want to put in but I can talk a little bit about my experience and my personal background and talk anecdotally about my history and how long it took me and what I learned throughout the way. Uh, so if you don't know me, by the way, my name is Fernando. I'm a professional poker player since 2011. I live in Switzerland and my specialty is PLO cash games. And uh, I specialized in PLO in 2010, then went professionally in 2011. And since then, I make a living playing poker. I went through the ranks. I started playing low stakes and moved up to mid stakes. And now I play a mix between mid and high stakes PLO from anywhere between 2.5 PLO online to 25.50 and sometimes a little bit higher in live games. Now, I started playing poker in 2005 though and build up my skill set, which is not only my technical skill set in terms of understanding the rules and strategies in poker, but also understanding bankroll management, understanding variance, understanding how to put in the hours and the technical things around it. There's a lot of things to learn, basically, which probably brings me to my first point. What matters a lot when it comes to the answer of the question, how long will it take you to get to a profitable level where you start making money? depends a lot on your experience that you have already in the poker industry. Are you already working with hold the manager? Have you already studied away from the table? Are you interested in strategy in the first place? Now, this is probably one of the most important questions that you have to ask yourself. And it also comes down to maybe talent or having a knack for poker in general. I have friends that play poker as a, uh, as a hobby. I have friends that play poker professionally of course and a lot of players that play professionally and when I look at the main difference between those two types of people it is the interest they have in actually the strategy of the game so when I look at my friends that play for a hobby and and they are not successful so to speak at least they're not successful from a financial standpoint they can support themselves playing poker or they're probably not plus CV players the main difference is that these guys are mainly interested in playing poker and having the monetary swings uh, winning some pots having interesting moments that can talk about but they are not really interested as much in the strategy aspect of the game they're not researching they're not uh, losing their minds over a situation because they really want to figure out what the best line would have been. They're not interested in solvers. They're not interested in pre-flop charts. They don't want to dive deeper into strategy. And if you don't have a knack for strategy in general, you can also think about other games, strategical games like board games or or computer games. If you don't have a knack for the strategy part of these game of these games, then you're probably not talented sufficiently in order to actually become a professional poker player in the first place. It also has a lot to do with your logical side of your brain, which means how much do you like to think about logic? How logical are you in the first place? And a lot of players that are not as talented, the reason they aren't is because they don't like to think as much in a very logical way, like what is the best strategy? They don't really wanna think about chess. They don't wanna think about strategical board games and the most plus CV option. They don't care that much about these things. And if that is you, then most likely poker for a living or for, for a side job, poker for profit is probably not going to work out for you. So that's probably the town part. Now on the other side, once you understood or once you, you recognized and you're self-aware of the fact that you probably are interested in strategy, the next question you want to ask yourself is, do you want to put in the hours? And you will have to put in a lot of hours. A lot. How many? A lot. It doesn't matter how many. Let's put it that way. I'm still going to give you an estimation, but your mindset shouldn't be at a place where you're asking yourself, how many hours do you have to put in to become a profitable player? Because first of all, that question is nonsense because nobody knows it because it's you personally. There's no recipe. There's no duration like in a, in a, in a bachelor degree that takes you three years and then you're there. 
that doesn't work out because everyone is individually different and learns differently and is differently talented, differently skilled, and also puts in a different amount of effort into their career. So we don't know. And the thing is, you also don't know. Even if you list all your talents and your experience, you wouldn't know because along the way, while you become better, you will learn so much more about yourself when it comes to playing poker professionally or as a side job or for profit. And, and then you will get a better and more and more accurate estimation of how long it will take you. But right now you're just guesstimating. It doesn't matter really. But I get this very often uh, that people send me this question and ask me, hey, how long does it take for me to become a professional poker player or to make money playing poker? And most likely if that question is a lot in your mind, most likely poker is not going to work out for you when it comes to a long term profitable perspective. You have to love the game. You have to love the strategical aspect. And you also have to love playing it and putting in a lot of hours. If you're looking for a job, if you're looking for something to make money fast, poker really isn't for you because it's not easy money at all. If you have an act for it, if you really and truly enjoy playing the game, then it starts to make sense to think about if it makes also financially sense, if you if you can build a future for yourself, you can make side income or a full income even and make a living. But if you don't have the passion for it, then you're just wasting your time. Because first of all, why would you do anyway anything that you're not passionate about? Just pick something else. You might have other talents in other areas. And I tell a lot of my friends that play poker as a hobby, I mainly tell them, and it's just a brutal truth, you know, you, you're not gonna make friends if you if you say this too often, but I you know mean it in a good way. If you play poker for a couple of years now, and you're not successful yet, most likely you're just not, you, you know, you're just not going to be successful in poker and you most likely are wasting your time if your ultimate goal is to make money playing poker. If you enjoy the game, of course, recreationally, no problem. I don't have any problem with that. Even if you're a losing player, you know, that's your thing. But if you're, if you think you want to be a profitable player, if you think you want to make money from this one day and you're already in the game for a couple of years and you're not there yet, then most likely it will be difficult for you to turn the switch and suddenly become a winning player. Most players that I know that are professional players these days, specifically the ones that made in high stakes, they have always been profitable players. I have always been a profitable player. And by always, I mean, probably not the first couple of months in 2005, but then quickly after already. And the reason I was already a winning player is because I immediately started studying the game because I was just interested. I, I didn't think about money. I didn't ever dream about becoming a professional. I never, I was not even considering it at all. I was just interested in the game. It's like similar to someone who just picks up chess as a hobby and then start to figure, well, I want to improve my skill set, so I have to learn and take courses and whatnot and read books. And that's basically how I approach poker. And a lot of the players that are successful these days approach poker the same way. They just love the strategical aspect. They love to put in the hours. They love to move up in stakes. And they don't think about how long it will take them to start making money. They don't even think about it at all in the beginning because you're just playing for so little money in the, in the start that it just doesn't really matter. And I'm going to break this down here just in a moment in terms of like how long do you have to play most likely to build up a role and then at what point you will start turning around money that actually quote unquote matters and has actually an impact into your life and it starts to make financial sense. So let me just recap this. First of all, you have to have a natural interest and a knack for strategic games and you want to think about them. And secondly, you really have to love poker and like to play it and put in a lot of hours. And then thirdly, your mindset shouldn't be that you're trying to make money from playing poker in the beginning. It's just that you really like this game. You would become as good as possible uh, playing poker. Now, one thing to realize is that when you are in the game as a professional for a couple of years, your passion will change, right? Like these days, I'm not as excited to play poker as I was back then. These days, it's more of a business, but I'm also excited about it because it is my business and I can make a good amount of money doing it. But it isn't as I w it isn't as it was when I just started out the first couple of years, but that's still fine. But if I would have been thinking the same way in the beginning stages like now, uh, then I would probably had problems actually seeing seeing a lot of sense pursuing poker because it takes a long time until you become a profitable player at mid or high stakes and you start turning around to reasonable money. All right, so let's first of all think about where you're probably starting off. Now, most players start off too high. They are, I mean, I get these messages all the time. Fernando or Jane Andes, I'm playing stakes between PLO 10 and PLO 100. Like that's insane. <laughs> you're, you're switching 10x the stakes 
um, just based on your bankroll. You're probably shot taking like five big blind bankroll, five buying bankrolls uh, for PLO 500. That's nonsense. Like you're gonna go broke every single time with that recipe. And I've done it before. A lot of players have done it before. You won't be able to build a sustainable future in poker and have long-term success if you're trying to run it up. And I know a lot of recreational players that love to run it up. That's their ultimate dream. I, I, I put in $50 into Poker Stars and turn it around to $5,000. That is a good story in their mind. If that story excites you, honestly, most likely poker is also not for you because the monetary swings, like they're not exciting to poker players. It's the strategical aspect. It is becoming a more skilled player, moving up in ranks. That's what is exciting to a poker player, having new tools in their arsenal and then bringing them to the table and dominating their opponents, feeling that edge, improving every single day. That is what excites professional poker players and successful poker players. It isn't running up your bankroll from $100 to $5,000. Like that's very seldom the motivation for a poker player. So you have to start taking it serious. And I generally recommend to take it serious by actually investing into your poker career because that's the way you want to approach it, right? It's similar to a bachelor's degree. You are signing up, you're putting down some money, you're buying the books, you're setting yourself up and you're committing yourself that way also financially. So what I would recommend is to first of all, get the right information and invest the money for doing that and acquiring the right information. Most players, like 99% of players, are not acquiring any information. It's no wonder they're not going to win. And then secondary, you have to also put up a bankroll. When I started out playing, I put up a $500 bankroll multiple times at a stage in my life where I didn't have any income. So I would just like save up money, save up money or sell things that I had my personal belongings in order to raise another $500 and put it up. And I did that probably eight to 10 times when I was like 18, 19, 20 years old in order to take a shot and, and see if I can play a 10 cent, 25 cent and no one hold them then back in the days before I switched to PLO. And I busted that roll multiple times. Sometimes I ran it up, quote unquote, to PLO 210K roll, but step by step, not shot taking. But then I would shot take and would lose it all back. And like, this is all part of the progress base to become a better and smarter poker player and starting to look at it more as a business, which is ultimately what it's gonna be if you play for profit. It is a business. Now, I would recommend to take money from your other income, income stream or from your savings and put it down. It could be $500, it could be $1,000, it could be $2,000, somewhere in that range so that you have a reasonable bankroll to start off with. And I would recommend to start off with 100 buy-ins. So if you play, for example, PLO at 10, if you play, for example, a PLO 10 cent, 25 cent, you would start off with a $2,500 roll. And for specifically PLO, you wanna start off with 100 buy-ins so you don't get nervous around the swings because you can lose like 20, 30 buy-ins pretty quickly, specifically if your edge is not very high. So you take some money from your income stream, from your savings, you put it down, and you're committing yourself to grind a certain stake and follow your bankroll management. And trust me, when you, will do, when you do this for the first time, you will, feel, you will feel a little bit anxious and a little bit nervous because you don't wanna lose that role because now it gets suddenly serious. And that's a good moment in your career because suddenly you realize, oh, I'm committed now, I'm putting down some actual money, not the $25, not the $50, not the $100 trying to gamble it up. I'm actually investing into my career. That's like the first commitment that you actually put into the game. The second commitment would be to then acquire the right information. So to get a course, to get a book, the right books, and, and also to uh, move into a community of people that can help you, that can be tremendously helpful because there's so much to learn and understand when it comes to the technical aspect, like hold the manager, which sides to play, rake back deals, and then also the strategical aspect, of course. And if you have access to a community, it is a huge, tremendous value because there might be somewhere out there that just started doing the same thing as you did, but he is already six months into it, one year into it, two years into it. And if you also have a bigger circle like we have in the PLO Mastermind, then you can also talk to people like myself or other professionals in our group that are years ahead of you. And they understand still where you are right now because that's where we all started at the end of the day. So you need some mentors, you need some allies, and you need some strategy and you need the bankroll and you need the right mindset. You see, there's a lot of things that come together to like make this happen. And 
if you're trying to shortcut this recipe, so to speak, it will be very, very difficult. I've seen many, many people trying to become successful in poker. I mean, I'm playing now 12 years and, and I have a huge uh, circle of friends and allies and, and people that I've seen and coach in the industry. And I know sort of like what works and what doesn't work specifically. When you coach people, you learn about their weaknesses and their mindsets and you see patterns. And um, for example, thinking about uh, running it up, thinking about uh, you know how much effort is it going to take and trying to rationalize it and, and and trying to estimate if it's enough effort if you want it enough hard that's usually not going to work out basically so let's put down some numbers here and first of all talk about what it would look like uh, if you would be a profitable player and what you're working towards because you always need a light at the end of the tunnel right you always want to have a goal line something that is achievable but not too close to you right now that motivates you as well it's called stretch goals like something that you can achieve in a reasonable time frame that actually excites you and that you always dream of in that in in the hard times when you are working on that goal in the process so for me for example it was always to first of all become a professional poker player at some point and that was a big goal of course and i was terrified once i turned professional because now i felt huge uh, pressure on my on my shoulders and and i think that's quite normal but it also grew me tremendously in this industry specifically at a young age at 22 23 if you are suddenly all on your own you move out like i did and you start playing poker professionally and there's no one that can really help you because the community wasn't as as unified as it is today and the products aren't as well worked out as today uh, there is a lot of pressure that comes along uh, but anyway um so once you like are set up basically uh, you only have to create that vision of what it is for me it was to become a professional poker player and then the long-term vision was always i wanted to be a high stakes player i want to play 5 10 that was high stakes for me back then i want to play 5 10 plo for a living if i would have reach this in my mind that was the pinnacle of my success basically i want to be called and call myself a high stakes player and that really helped me because it motivates you to have a vision like this specifically if it's not too too far away so let me just put down for a for a cash game player what could be a stretch goal that a lot of people are trying to get to so let's say a stretch goal could be you want to play one two plo online so or one two p one two plo or no limit hold and cash online let me just put up the fan it's getting hot in here so this could be a reasonable goal right now what does this actually mean how would your life look like if you would be a one two plo or no limit hold and cash player let me lay out let me lay, let me lay this out for you because maybe what it is is it's not as exciting to you, you know, you may be not excited about this and, and then it's probably not even worth trying to get there. And I think that's really the harsh reality that a lot of people have to realize is that maybe it's not worth it to you, you know, maybe you do better doing something else. Um, and it's sometimes it's hard to give up on, a, on an idea, on a dream, but also the grass looks always greener on the other side. You, know, you might imagine that being a professional poker player is just making tons of money in a, in a sort of easy way and living the dream every single day. And I can tell you right away, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's a little bit different for sure. I'm going to talk about it as well in this video, uh, how it is to be a professional poker player at different stages, right? Because I was a small stakes player for a living. I was a mid and high stakes player for a living. I played MTTs for a living. I played PLO cash for a living. I played live poker for a living. I did all these stages throughout the last couple of years. So let's say this would be your pinnacle of success, at least in a time frame of, let's say, a year. And uh, you're trying to reach the 1-2 PLO level. And at this point, you would play it professionally, right? Like you want to maybe quit your job or after, after you're done with school, you want to move into a full-time career as a PLO or No Limit Holding Cash online player at the 1-2 stake. Now, how many hours are you going to put in? Uh, I would say a reasonable volume is going to be to play five hours a day for six days a week. And when I say fit six days a week, I don't, I mean, I'm talking about you take one day off, but not Sundays because Sunday is just very, very sweet. Usually when other people uh, have holidays or have time off their job, you are working because it's the choosiest time online. So that's also something that you have to realize about the lifestyle of being a professional poker player. So let's say you put in five hours of grinding a day 
and that's for six days a week. Now, if you play four Zoom tables, which is probably the pinnacle of a volume we're trying to reach, you're gonna play around 500 hands an hour. And if we think about reasonable win rates, like anything in between PLO and no limit, like in no limit, you can achieve lower win rates these days than in PLO for sure. But let's say in between would be somewhere along the lines of five big blinds per hundred. Like that's in PLO at least definitely achievable. In no limit holding, you probably have to be really good in order to achieve five big blinds a hundred. So five BB a hundred, what does that mean? That equates to $10 per hundred hands. All right, so you will make $10 a hundred hands. So $10, divided by 100. How many hands are you going to play a month? You're going to play around 60,000 hands. I'm going to tell you how I get to this equation in a second. Uh, so how much money is that? Well, times 60,000 hands, that's 6,000 US dollars. I'm just going to put it like this. Well, we're in, I'm in Europe, so I'm going to put it like this. 6,000, all right? So you would be playing uh, five hours a day, six, six days a week. You put in 60,000 hands a month, which is pretty reasonable. And in that month where you put in 60,000 hands, you're going to make an average $6,000. Now, of course, you're going to have some swings and also you are going to have to study away from the table. So I would recommend if you think about the lifestyle you're trying to achieve, it would be to play five hours a day and then study anywhere between one and two hours a day. If you can achieve that, I mean, that's gonna be necessary to sustain in this industry and, and be relevant and, and, and remain good and a profitable player, like one to two hours a day is gonna be what you're looking at. So that's pretty much a full working day because you're not gonna put down the five hours of grinding in one sitting. You're gonna have sessions uh, like an hour session, take 15 minute break, another hour session, you take a 10 minute break, another one hour session, you might, might have a lunch break for like an hour. So it takes you more than five hours to play five uh, hours of poker. You will have to have some breaks in there for sure. So that's pretty much your work there, right? It's gonna be like eight, nine hours if you think about the, uh, the five hours of gameplay that you are, are gonna put in at the tables and then also the one to two hours away from the table. That's pretty much a normal work day, right? And you're gonna do that six times a week, not five times a week. And if you wanna be a professional poker player, definitely forget like the easy schedule. You probably have to play six days a week or seven days a week for quite a while to make a reasonable living and also build up your bankroll, sustain also, uh, or, or, or basically have a bankroll that can also take a hit during some swings and build this up. Uh, at later stages, when you're playing higher stakes, you could also allow yourself to play less often. You still have to study a ton to remain good and beat the games, but you might also be able to play only five days a week. But in the beginning, you're going to be a grinder and you're going to play six days a week. You're going to make $6,000 in the months that you're playing. And if you want to have some holidays, like four weeks, for example, that is the standard in Switzerland, four to five weeks, that's like a month, then you're gonna miss out on one month of income, which is also something to recognize and become aware of. If you don't play, you don't make any money. That's it, right? That's just a fact, which is not the case in a, in a, in a normal job where you are also getting paid during your holidays. So let's imagine you would make $6,000 11 months of the year. You're gonna take one month off. That's gonna be $66,000 salary. So when we think about this number, $66,000, and that's gonna be your pinnacle after one year, after one year. So I'm gonna talk in a moment about how do you get actually to this pinnacle? How do you get to this first stage, so to speak? Uh, but that's pretty much what you're going to work yourself towards within that first year, right? You're trying to become a one, two winning player. And for some of you, it might take four months, six months, eight months, 12 months, 18 months, anywhere beyond that, you're probably not going to make it because you're not going to be talented enough or you don't want to put in enough effort. But within a year, you're going to get to this point. And what you have to realize is, first of all, is this the goal that you're envisioning? Is this something for you? Are you trying to make $66,000 in with this lifestyle? And I'm gonna talk in a moment about what the lifestyle is all about, so to speak, what the advantages and disadvantages are in my experience, but this is pretty much where you're trying to get to. If that motivates you, if you're getting excited about this, then you're probably on the right path. 
Now, of course, this doesn't have to be the ultimate pinnacle. Of course, you can move up in stakes, you can turn a business, or you can turn this into a business, you can start coaching people, you can start twitching and becoming a big streamer. But like, those are all things that require additional talent and effort and some timing and luck and so on. So I definitely don't want to down talk being a professional poker player or the chances of getting there. But all I'm saying is, is, is that when I look at this, this is not what I had in mind, what I knew about poker and becoming a professional poker player when I started out. When I made, when I had the idea to become a professional poker player, I thought about Phil Ivey. I thought about hundreds of thousands of dollars and was excited. But the reality is, that's probably not the reality after a year, two years, three years, four years. It's probably not the reality for almost all of us. And I just want you guys to realize it and make a decision based on the actual reality and not on some sort of dreams, right? Okay, next up, I wanna quickly talk about the lifestyle. I don't wanna make this video too, too long. Although there are some questions in here that I think a lot of people are interested in getting answered. What is the lifestyle like at this stage? The pinnacle after one year. When I think back about my career, I was obsessed, right? And I, I was obsessed because I wanted to be obsessed. That's my nature, you know, my natural being. I was always obsessed about certain things. It, it was about uh, soccer. It was about music. It, it was about playing volleyball. It was about teaching volleyball. It was about um, working in a casino and, and I was actually a casino dealer and I might have another story time video about that at some point and talk about how I came up in the industry. Let me know in the comment section if you want to hear about it. But I was I was basically um, hired by a casino to be a, a dealer, a poker dealer. And then I also trained 40 other poker dealers because I was obsessed with the industry. You know, I just wanted to function and work in it. And then I became a professional poker player at some point. But once I was a professional poker player and I was at this stage, I was a one two uh, PLO player, uh, 50 cent, $1 to one two, basically in the beginning in 2011, it was a grind and it was tough. Like I was eating uh, cheap food for sure. I was living in a very small apartment, student's apartment that only had one room, no kitchen. And we had like a community kitchen basically for 700 bucks a month. That's very, very cheap in Switzerland, by the way. And I was living a minimalistic life and playing seven days a week. Uh, I had a girlfriend that went to the gym because those things are really important in order to get some balance. But there's not a lot of socializing. There's not a lot of freedom. You're not gonna, you're not gonna charter some private chats and head over to the Bellagio and you know lay down, uh, put down fifteen thousand dollars and play some cash game, and and live the dream. That's not how it starts off at all. It is a grind for sure, and. Um, you know, thinking back about it, I enjoyed every single moment of it because what happens is when you're suddenly all on your own and you're living your dream, so to speak, even though it is hard and it is tough and there are some intensely pressuring moments, you also grow out of it. And if you appreciate the growth through stressful moments to suffering, to having to make difficult decisions and having really terrible swings that you're not used to and not accustomed to because now suddenly it is about your livelihood. It's not anymore just about fun. It's, it's about, you know, you're paying your rent. You know, if you, if you appreciate the growth that comes out of this process, then poker might be something for you. If you don't, it's gonna be a tough time because there are some, there are some difficult moments when you are a poker player. You have some swings, every month is different. And also there's a lot of pressure on you because you have to be consistently good and you have to consistently improve and you have to consistently put down your A game or A minus game. Otherwise, you're gonna go broke. And that's also something that you have to realize about the work environment. It is tough, it is taxing. And what that means is when you play poker, you have to be on top of your shit at all times. In another job, you can sometimes, you know, have some less productive days and less intense days. And sometimes you're sick and sometimes you're quitting early. You can also do that in poker, but you're going to go broke really quick because nobody pays you for mediocre work. You're going to lose money, in fact, for mediocre work, which is way different than in any other profession. And that's really what creates the pressure. You have to function every single day. And I can tell you in the last eight years, I haven't been sick many days at all. Like I can probably count the days I was sick in, in two hands. That's it, you know, where I took one off basically. 
Um, but I, you know, I, I personally enjoy that. But it's not for everyone. You have to realize it's not for everyone. It's for people who have an obsessive nature. It is for people who like the grind, love the game, who also really want to get to that level of freedom that I, I now experience after a lot of years. So in the beginning stages, you're going to play a lot of poker and you're going to have a few hobbies around, but that's pretty much all you can allow yourself. There's not going to be a big social circle. You're not going to go out every weekend. You're mainly going to grind and put in the hours and you're trying to pay the bills and, and succeed as a poker player. And I was totally fine with that. Like I, I, again, appreciated every second of it, basically. You're going to grow out of this and become better and move up in stakes and start making smarter decisions. You learn so much more about yourself. And the freedom you have essentially is that you can just create and design your own lifestyle, so to speak, which means you can work from home or you can work in an office. I did both. I had an office at some point with other poker players. I worked from home at some point and I started designing and, and, and making my environment better by, you know, every year I lived in a very small student's apartment, moved into a bigger apartment, into a bigger apartment where now I live in a house. Uh, which has a lot of space and, and we have cats that are sleeping there in the background. We have a garden, like all this stuff happens after years of hard work, of course, but it gets you to a certain level of freedom. But again, it's not for everyone. Some people experience more freedom and more happiness by just having a secure job and then having the option to develop more hobbies aside and having a stronger social circle. I, I can tell you after years being in the industry like you're going to lose a lot of friends because you don't have enough time for them or you develop in a different direction if your friends are non-poker players it's hard to keep up with them you know because you're in a completely different mindset uh, you're independent and you are obsessive and you change and progress in different directions so to speak so there are some challenges in there for sure Again, I appreciate all of them and, you know, it's my nature, uh, but it's not for everyone is basically what I'm saying. You have to define happiness uh, for yourself and it has a lot to do with self-awareness. Now, let me end up this video here by talking about how do you get to this pinnacle in the first place? Because that's really the difficult part of it as well. Uh, because until you are a professional poker player and you start taking a shot with a reasonable bankroll, let's say you have something like... $30,000 or $40,000 depending on which country you live in what your expenses are and you start taking a shot at 50 cent a dollar at one dollar two dollar and, and become a professional poker player with some backup money until you are at this point you have to build up a skill set while you're doing something else on the side right like while you are studying while you are working you have to do something else on the side and that's really where you will experience the most pressure and the biggest challenges in my opinion in 2010 i was still studying economics in, uh, in another city that i live right now in and i was grinding both careers at the same time and that was incredibly taxing and so difficult because there's so much to learn when you're going through this economics bachelor degrees. There's a lot of things you have to do and, and grind out. But at the same time, I also wanted to really become better at poker. So it creates this very competitive environment between those two careers. And then anything else is sort of like set aside. You know, your health, your social circle, your family, like all these things are set aside because you are actually trying to build up these two careers. And that's a big, big challenge. Now, I think you can go through this. It's gonna be a, a lonely and, and, and difficult time for sure. You have to be very obsessive about it. And I think the only way to get through to this is by you being super excited about the light at the end of the tunnel, which is exactly what we're defining right here, right? And I'm gonna probably put down like a couple of other ideas. Maybe you wanna become a live player. Maybe you wanna be an MTT player. But you have to have a vision in order to endure this difficult time while you are building up the skill set and the bankroll while you're still doing something else, which is super difficult, of course. Um, so I hope this is helpful for you guys. I think I'm going to end up the video here. Of course, like you can put down the numbers for MTTs, average buy-ins. You probably want to have 100 to 200 buy-ins for MTTs. You're going to make a similar amount of money, maybe a little bit less. Playing MTTs, you're going to have more variance and a more difficult lifestyle because you have to grind um, longer hours and at the same time you have to adjust towards the schedule of MTTs. Uh, you can play live, which is much softer. You can make more money. The lifestyle is different. If you live in the right location, that's probably even preferable because you can make more money and it's more social. But also, depending on where you live, you have to probably work night shift every single time. 
Um, but I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Hope this video gives you a lot of value. If you wanna hear more of these kind of videos, uh, maybe you wanna get to know more about my past and how I came up in the poker industry, how I turned professional, like what my ideas were, um, how the first couple of years went, what the biggest challenges were, and how basically I got to the point where I'm right now. And then let me know in the comment section. Anyway, I appreciate your attention, guys. Fernando for another video. Uh, over and out, enjoy your day.